Destroy it! No! No! Don't give them an inch! You're watching The Art of Say Scumming. Thank you for tuning in. And today we're talking about Arbal the Undefeated, who is your mortal lord coming as FLC content with update 6.0 or Omens of Destruction, depending on how you're looking at it. And this is basically the exact opposite of what they did for the demon faction in Thrones of Decay. So the DLC character was a mortal aligned lord. The FLC character was demons. Well, now we've got demons for the DLC Lord and mortals for the FLC Lord. So anyway, Arbol has access to the Challenges of Corn, which is a travel mechanic that we'll get into a little bit more in depth here in a second. And uh, upkeep reduction 10% for all non-demonic units. That is a faction-wide effect. So that is all armies that you will recruit for the entire campaign will benefit from minus 10% for all demonic units upkeep costs construction costs minus 50 percent for mortal military and defense buildings and construction time minus 50 percent for mortal military and defense buildings his individual lord effects so this is going to be him and his associated army global recruit duration minus one turn for all units uh, weapon strength plus 10 for non-demonic units in his army passive ability hellblade and the hellblade is a weapons base damage and our piercing damage effect and that is for chaos warriors chosen uh, chaos knights and skull crushers of corn and the ability gaze of corn and that is a uh, rechargeable explosion ability and it doesn't take all that long to uh, to charge up but he is stationary during the time while it is charging up. So keep that in mind. Here we are in a new Arbol campaign. He starts in this region right here and he starts out with the Stormbrack Mount and already has uh, the, uh, the forge building built. So you could right off the bat, for instance, if you didn't already start with a cultist, recruit a new cultist. So it would be, for instance, if you wanted to start cults you could send a, this cultist wherever you wanted to start a cult and then recruit a brand spanking cult new one once war. they had done the thing you see what i'm saying so anyway he starts out at war with this faction right here minor ogre faction that owns these regions and you're pretty much predisposed to complete this uh province right quick and in a hurry so let's move to his individual mechanics which are the challenges of corn and it is accessed with that button right there you use corn's favor to do stuff within the challenges of corn and corn's favor is accrued by winning battles uh, various quests and things like that and you can spend it in a couple different ways one is for travel so you can uh, select one of these battles that you've got going on over here and there are three tiers there's worthy battles there are perfect challenges and ultimate blood baths and regard um it if you select it, you can see the cost to travel there. They are all five to travel. And then there is a, uh, a reward for each of them. And then as you complete them, they refill. So like once you get this one, another one will pop up somewhere else and allow you to bounce around the map meet new factions and all that sort of stuff. In addition to using it to travel, you can also use it for these various continuous effects. So if I were to select this one, for instance, it would cost one favor for activation costs and then one per turn. So every time I, every time I hit end turn, I'm going to get a, a, uh, a, a cost associated with that. So as long as I can meet that, uh, you're good and it can remain in effect consistently. So like for instance, this one upkeep, uh, for faction leaders, army 25%, uh, 8% for all armies, but that's going to cost you three and then three every single turn. So this is not something that you're going to be able to pop like right from the get go because you're just not going to be able to maintain it. Right. But you might, for instance, be able to pop this one and, you know, keep it going. But it, some of these also have negative effects. Like for instance, this one, you get extra favor 
um, each time you complete a challenge and uh, after winning a battle, but your army starts off tired. See what I'm saying? So there, there are some positive and negatives in, in this stack here. Now, there is no cooldown for traveling, but if we go in here, there are some stipulations for travel. So, like, for instance, if I wanted to travel right now, I can't travel. And um, let's see what the stipulation that is keeping me from travel. If I wanted to travel here, I can't do it because our ball may not travel under the following conditions. If he has already traveled this turn, so I can't do it more than once in a single turn when the region is owned by a faction that he is at war with and that is what is keeping me from traveling as i'm sitting inside somebody else's region when he or his target are at sea so i obviously can't travel while i'm at sea and if he is recruiting units so if i wanted to travel for instance anywhere all i need to do is move out of this region here let's just move to here and then I would be able to travel to this one right here, for instance. And here I am. I maintain my movement, so I would be able to launch an attack if I want to. And that is basically how the mechanic works. Okay, so let's take a look at Arbal himself and his unique items and uh, quest battle as well as uh, what he's got going on in his skill line. So pretty standard fare as far as you know the, the blue line, the red line, and the yellow line. His mounts, he gets the Flesh Hound of Corn, which is, I, I believe he's the only one who has a Flesh Hound of Corn. Uh, replenishes 30% uh, campaign movement range after winning a battle and replenishes 20% campaign movement range after raising a settlement. He does not start with these. After he gets a certain number of levels, they automatically fill. So keep that in mind. Like I didn't put any points here. They just automatically fill. Kind of like your mounts do. But his special line, he has uh, casualty replenishment in uh, foreign territory. So he doesn't start with this, but he can get this. And it also comes with the Eye of Corn, which is a direct damage ability, except for you can only use it on an enemy unit that has like 20% of its hit points left. And it instantly turns that enemy unit into a degrading unit of Chaos Spawn on your behalf. So it summons a unit of Chaos Spawn, deletes an enemy unit that's at 20% health or less. Uh, this one attacks uh, cause discourage, and the discourage effect is a minus 16 leadership. It also has a melee defense and bonus for symmetry. And this one, enemy reinforcement time, 30%, uh, weapon strength increase, and uh, thirst for challenge, which is one of those building uh, mechanics where it's uh, melee defense starts at zero, but can move up to 20%. And then, of course, base weapons damage and an armor piercing similar. Uh, this one is a 15% physical resistance, cooldown for your gaze of corn, 50%, and then another use of the eye of corn, which is that uh, ability that we talked about first. Uh, Mortal Champions, this gives devastating flanker to Chaos Knights and Skull Crushers. So that is your uh, basically chosen mounted uh, unit. Uh, attribute extrovert charge defense for non-demonic infantry units, all units in the army, and upkeep minus 15% for chaos warriors, chaos, uh, excuse me, chosen chaos knights and uh, skull crushers of corn units. And then this one is causes terror, cause uh, attribute unbreakable for all non-demonic units, rank seven and above. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a really big deal. Now, as far as his quest battle is concerned, we have the Destroyer of Corn, and the Destroyer of Corn is melee attack, arm piercing weapon damage, skulls gained from battle, uh, passive ability Destroyer of Corn, right there on screen, perfect vigor, and then um, his item, Destroyer of Corn takes a sword slot. 
He does have access to the Skull Throne, but he does not have access to the Unholy Manifestations. So keep that in mind. The Unholy Manifestations are reserved to Skull Taker and uh, Scarbrand. So the, both of those get those, but the uh, Mortal Lord does not. A little bit different flavor. Now, I do have a full video out there on Skull Taker if you would like to go check that out. And I guess at this point in time, I can render a re review. So I would say as far as comparing the two together, I would say that they both feel pretty good, but I actually prefer the mechanics of the FLC Lord. It feels a little bit more sandboxy to me in that um, I can basically go around and set up little fiefs across the map. I can show up to an area, rampage around that area, set up uh, a small amount of territory there, and then just get out very quickly. And it doesn't feel as though I'm incentivized really to stay in any particular area because I can just go back to my region with spending a little bit of corn's favor i can go back to my my base in fact depending on how you play this you can see that i've basically in this campaign i've I consolidated this territory and then i don't have any connecting territory until i get like all the way up here right so i'm working on this territory over here but this uh, province over here is completely unconnected to anything else that i'm doing I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Sound off and let me know what you guys want me to cover next when it comes to Omens of Destruction.